I want to read you an interesting quotation sent to me privately by F.F. F. Bruce in the 1980s, in which he says that evangelicals are just as much slaves of tradition as are Roman Catholics, only they don't know that it's tradition. It's a profoundly interesting statement. Let me repeat that from the very famous F.F. F. Bruce. Evangelicals, he said, are just as much slaves of tradition, except they don't know that it's tradition. Nowhere is that truer than in the doctrine of the Trinity. Many scholars acknowledge fully that the Trinity is a non-biblical doctrine. It comes in finally at Chalcedon. It's getting there slowly at Nicaea. But even at Nicaea, they did not specify that the third person of the Trinity existed. They simply said, we believed in the Holy Spirit. Even at the end of 385, some of the church fathers were saying, some of us think the third person is, is the Holy Spirit, others are not sure. There was some vagueness in This is 300 years beyond the New Testament. There's no evidence at all for the third person of the Trinity in the New Testament. The third person never sends any greetings, is never thanked, is never prayed to, and is never worshipped. The third person is defined as the Parakletos, the Paraclete, and Jesus is said to be the Parakletos himself in 1 John 2, verse 1. All of which amounts to the most interesting development in modern thinking, uh, modern evangelical thinking. The very distinguished Daniel Wallace, who wrote expert uh, words about uh, Greek grammar and so on, is now saying that Paul was a Binitarian. He was referring to 1 Corinthians 8, verses 4 to 6. Paul was a Unitarian, clearly. He's echoing what Jesus had said in Mark 12, 29, that the Lord our God is one Lord. Paul says exactly the same thing in the famous passage in 1 Corinthians 8, verses 4 to 6. Paul begins by saying that in the pagan world there are many gods. But to us Christians, there is one God, the Father, how easily he could have said to us Christians as one God, comma, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That would have been most convenient and all argument would be put to rest. He doesn't say that. He simply repeats what is said 1,300 times in the New Testament. That the word atheos, often with the article the God, as Bishop Wright says so nicely, the God that we all recognize, the one God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Not any old God, but not just God, but the God, atheos. Paul says, the God is the Father, the Lord God. There's one God, comma, the Father. That is plainly a unitary, non-Trinitarian monotheistic statement. Now Paul goes on to Paul to associate with that one God, Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus himself had associated himself with the one God in John 17, 3. But Paul describes Jesus as the one Lord Jesus Messiah. Notice that's the one Messiah, Jesus. Not the one God, Jesus. You see, in the Bible, they didn't confuse God with the Messiah. Nobody thought the Messiah was going to be God. That would be revolutionary. It would have taken books and more books to explain this incredible development that the Messiah is actually God. No, Luke 2.11 states that the Lord Christ was born in Bethlehem. Nobody in those days imagined that God got born, much less that God could die. The Lord Messiah is so mentioned, what, 600 times? Jesus is the Christ. He's the Lord Messiah, not the Lord God.